Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome to the show. This is Andy Webb with Lifestyles Unlimited. And as always, we're working on your financial freedom. And if I harken back a couple hundred years and some change uh, to our freedom here in the country, we had a great man, you all know him, Benjamin Franklin. He wrote in a letter, and I'm, I'm sure to mispronounce his name, it's a French name, Jean-Baptiste Leroy. This was in 1789. And with respect to our Constitution, which was newly penned, Benjamin Franklin wrote, our new Constitution is now established and has the appearance that promises permanency. But in this world, nothing can be said to be certain except, you know it, death and taxes. <laughs> so he wrote that. Now, he actually was not the originator of that phrase. A gentleman named uh, Daniel Defoe, an author, uh, preceded him with that. But we all know what ben, ben Franklin said, death and taxes, nothing else is certain in life. And although it is not within my power to help you defer death, I can't, I can't help you there. I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we may be able to help you at Lifestyles Unlimited create that lifestyle to help you enjoy your life a bit more. We, we say it all the time. It's not the money. It's the lifestyle. But the money helps us get there. And one thing is certain when I think back to that phrase, nothing in life except death and taxes, you can take steps to reduce the tax part of that statement, the tax burden. And that's what I want to get into today, how you can keep more of your money by being a real estate investor and as a real estate investor. We're going to explore a number of concepts around taxes, how you can use real estate to defer taxes and to reduce taxes on your earned income. For example, you can take real estate passive uh, losses from your real estate to reduce that uh, tax burden on your earned income, meaning if you are working a job. Yes, you can do that. And yes, we, we will talk a little bit more about protesting those property taxes. That is that is certainly part of the conversation. And if you want to learn more about the process, how, how to do that, how to protest those property taxes, at least here in Texas, I would refer you to my recent show with a gentleman named Julian Ball. He's with Ball Property Tax Services. This is a company out of San Antonio, longtime vendor with Lifestyles Unlimited, in fact. But he was a recent guest, and we laid out that process. He, he, he went into great detail around informal filings, the formal process, and, and so on. So you can go to our website, lifestylesunlimited.com, and uh, that, that show is archived there already. And I know there, there's been a huge uproar in the real estate community, the investor community that I'm part of, not, not just Lifestyles Unlimited, but my broader sphere here in Dallas-Fort Worth, where I sit, my connections in Houston, in San Antonio, in Austin. Uh, there's a huge uproar uh, with respect to the, the property tax valuations that have just come down the pike. So that is certainly germane to today's conversation. So we're going we're, we're gonna to look at a lot of areas where you can use real estate to your advantage from a tax perspective. Now, we're going to explore this through a timeline of about three to four years, we're going to buy one single family house. And the tax advantages that we talk about, we, as, as members at Lifestyles Unlimited, we invest in single family houses, rental houses, as well as apartments. And a lot of what we talk about apply on the apartment side of the equation as well. But for most people, you start by buying one single family rental house, and then you buy another and another after that. So we're going to do that on today's show. We're just going to buy one and I'm going to take that property from start to finish in its uh, investment cycle to explore these these tax concepts or these these ways that you can see benefits as a real estate investor from the uh, uh, tax perspective. And I, I, I would be remiss if I don't remind you that I am not a CPA. I am not a certified public accountant. I am not a tax professional. So be sure to do a deeper dive and consult with yours, your CPA 
or tax professional. I, I, if you're new to the show, I'm just a, just a real estate investor. Been doing it for about a decade now. As I mentioned here in the Dallas Fort Worth area, my wife and I joined Lifestyles Unlimited 10 years ago, about a decade or so ago. Uh, we became members and started buying these houses. So everything that I we're going to talk about today, I, I, I've seen these uh, tax advantages in play. So let's talk about what we're going to buy. We're going to buy a house. And I just went to my email this morning and opened up one of the email blasts that I get from the Lifestyles Unlimited Realty team. The first one I pulled up, this one is down near Houston. And let's just go through a couple of quick metrics. This is, this is basically a house that's available. So if you're a member at Lifestyles Unlimited, you're, you're working with the Realty team, you could buy this house. And the asking price, stay tuned, here it is, 121000 now, this is not a house that's ready to go. We're going to have to do some work. And I didn't really talk with the realtor. I just kind of worked through his numbers and backed into what the rehab, the renovation budget would be. It's about 49000 So all in, we're going to be about one hundred and seventy k with purchase plus renovations on this property. And when we're done, the after repair value, that's a common term in our industry, uh, ARV, after repair value, the, the market value in short, is 189,000. So we're going to be all in at 170. We're going to have 189k when we're done. And to get us there, we're going to need about $33,000. That's going to be our cash out of pro out of pocket through the whole process from purchase. We're going to buy with hard money. We're going to do those renovations and then we're going to refinance out into a long-term fixed rate mortgage. And all of this is going to play into our discussion as we go through our holding period over about three to maybe maybe four years. So what's gonna happen? Year one, we, we have this property, we, we've identified it, we're gonna buy the house. Now you may be asking, well, how, how do I find a house? Well, find a good realtor. Find a good realtor. Uh, if you're a member at Lifestyles Unlimited, work with the Realty team, um, work with wholesalers in your market, find out who they are, or just, just good old fashioned word of mouth. I've bought a number of houses over the years just because people know that we're buying houses and, and buying junkers at that. So they bring their business to us. Hey, I've got a friend, a relative, whatever, let people know. So we're gonna buy the property. We're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna come back and rehab it and go from there. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Now, let's get back to your map to financial freedom. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Andy Webb, coming to you from Dallas-Fort Worth. I am a member at Lifestyles Unlimited. I have been a member for about a decade now, and over that period of time, my wife and I have bought a decent-sized portfolio of single-family houses, and we've seen and experienced a lot of the tax advantages. And there are challenges at time and a big burden that everybody's lamenting right now are the county appraisal district values that they've literally just come out with. I finally got the last couple uh, in the mail for my last remaining properties to see where I stand. And the values, quite frankly, they are up. We, we, we know that. In fact, I went through the show with uh, Julian Ball with the pro, uh, pro, uh, protest company recently i threw out a couple numbers I, I i misspoke on one of those i i, I think it came out as 13 percent in austin austin's price growth is more than that it's like 30 <laughs> percent so it came out wrong 30.6 percent so you're naturally going to see in that appraised value from the county a big big jump and i looked across my portfolio now that i know what all the values are before i protest them if i did nothing if I did nothing, my, my, my tax burden across the portfolio increases $20,000 on the year. It's about $1,500, $1,600 a month in cash flow that is now being escrowed or going towards those property taxes. So we're absolutely going to fight those. So that's one place where we as real estate investors have to take some action. But, and that's not an advantage, right? That's a, a, a burden on us here in Texas with our high property rates, property tax rates. But there are a lot of advantages. And we're going to look at all of the pieces as we go through our hold period on this house. Now, we talked, we talked in the first segment about the house we're going to buy. I just picked up an email from one of the realty team. Uh, first one that was in, at the top of my inbox this morning, and this was down in uh, near Houston. So I gave you the metrics there. And we're going to buy the property. 
Now we're going to renovate it. This is a house that clearly needs some work. Purchase price of 121,000 with an after repair value of 189. To get me there, I'm going to need about 49,000 in in repairs. What are we doing? Now I don't have the details from the realtor. I didn't dig in with him, but I would estimate some foundation and plumbing work. The build build year on this house is 1975, so it's a little bit older. And a lot of houses I bought in that age range, 50s, 60s, maybe 70s. Often they're not even touched by the owner, so we're doing a lot of cosmetic. You know, all new flooring, all new paint throughout, all new fixtures, light fixtures, uh, plumbing fixtures, all that good stuff, toilets, lot, lots of cosmetics, of course, new water heater, new new HVAC. So for 49000 I can easily do that probably a little bit more. And here's the interesting part for you. We make our money five different ways with our houses, or we make it make it four ways. The fifth way is how we retain our money, which is through the tax advantages, which is what we'll talk through on the bulk of the show. But through this process, just on this one house, by buying low, getting the repairs done, and creating some equity on the back end, I told you that we're about $33,000 out of pocket on this house, but we're creating through that process $17,000 in additional equity. So I've got 33 in the property. I've created an additional 17. So I'm sitting now on $50,000 in this house in equity. That's about a 40 to 50% uh, return just on that equity that I've captured. We call that equity capture. That's one of the ways that we make money through the renovation process, through the purchase, renovation, and refi process. Now I've got the, the house stabilized. I've got it renovated. I've got it on the market. I get it rented. And how do you do that? You can you can do it yourself. It's very easy. Uh, you, you hire a leasing agent. Great way to do it if you're working a full time job. We we did that for years. But you're going to get a resident into place, and that resident is now paying rent every month. And I looked at this house. It's again backing into the numbers. It's about fifteen hundred dollars uh, that we'd be charging for rent on this house. And out of that rent that we collect, we pay the mortgage, the the principal and interest. We pay the taxes. We pay the insurance. Those are our fixed costs. Of course, as we've seen with those property tax valuations, taxes aren't exactly fixed, but we can fight those. So aside from the PITI, principal interest, that's the mortgage taxes and insurance, we may set aside a little bit, maybe $50 a month per, per property into a repair escrow account, just a rainy day fund. But the truth of the matter is, because we've followed the lifestyles model, best product, best price, We've taken this house, this older build that needed some work, needed updating, and we went in and hit everything that needed repairs or anything we thought might break in the next handful of years. Because again, this house we're going to hold for maybe three or four years, and then we're going to dispose of it. We're going to sell it. So we're not really going to experience any maintenance issues. So our main costs are going to be those fixed PITI costs. So the rest is profit. And on this house, this is per the realtor's email to me, estimated uh, profit is about $414 per month. Now do the math on that. That's about $5,000 per year that you're putting into your pocket. And $400 in Texas, that's about normal on a single family house. I see some that are lower towards 200. I see some that are higher towards six or even 700. But typically we're somewhere in the middle, right? About 400. So this is an average house that we would buy as members at Lifestyles Unlimited. So we're collecting about, we're profiting about 5,000 per year. Now think back to what I told you. Our cash out of pocket, the money that we put into this deal for the whole process, 33000 Five divided by that number, that gives you a 14.8% return. That's a great return on your investment right there. We also heard already that you're, you're getting about 40 to 50% in terms of equity capture. That's that gain in equity measured by measured against your cash out of pocket. Already, we're doing very, very well on this house. Now, I told you we've put some residents into pay, place that are paying our mortgage for us every month. That's another way that we make money as single-family rental house investors. They're paying down that mortgage. They're paying down that principal. And again, here I just did the math based on the ARV or the market value. Took out a, just a simple mortgage calculator. And what I know I can get for interest rates at the moment, and our principal pay down is about $200 a month, $2,500 a year. That, that alone is 7.5% return. Now park that on top of the cash on cash return, we're, we're, we're over 22%. Great, great numbers. So we're making money five different ways. We're, we're, we've got that equity capture we talked about. 
we've got that cash flow, we've got that uh, mortgage pay down, that principal pay down or equity buildup. And, and we haven't talked about appreciation yet. That'll come in year two for us and year three as we, as we look back. Now let's talk about the taxes. Now the first big tax advantage, and on this house you're only gonna experience it in the first year, but it is a rehab house. We had to do some renovations, about $49,000 worth. Some of that renovation budget will be capitalized by your accountant or by you, and, and some will be expensed. Now, what's the difference there? Expenses are, are things I'm going to take as a hit right now in year one, whereas that which is capitalized, I'm going to I'm going to add that to my, my my basis in the property, and I'm going to depreciate it, which means I'm going to take it as a as a ghost expense every year for 27 and a half years if I hold the property that long. So some part will go to expenses, some part will go to that capitalization. By the way, if you're doing hard money, and we are on this particular deal, you're going to capitalize any any points that you pay to the lender, also known as origination fees, that 1%, 2%, spread that out. And any mortgage interest we've paid to that hard money lender, that's going to be expensed. So we're going to take a very sizable loss just due to the renovations in this first year. And from that, we get our first big tax advantage. We're going to head into a break. I'll tell you about that when we come back. Listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Andy Webb. If you have any questions for me, send me an email to askandy at l-u-i-n-c dot com. And we're taking a look today at the tax advantages, really all things to do with taxes around real estate investing. As, as Ben Franklin said, there's nothing certain in life but death and taxes. Well, we have a lot of tax advantages as real estate investors, and I, and I want to make you aware of some of those. And we're, what we're doing is we're looking at a single family house. We bought it, we're, we renovated it, and we're going to hold it for a couple of years, and then we're going to sell it. Although you may decide to hold it a little longer, you, you have a lot of options once you start to put these things into into play. And we, we were talking in the in the prior segment about the very first big tax advantage. And if you missed any of the earlier show, you can go to lifestylesunlimited.com, click on the radio button. The shows are archived there. But this is a house that does need some work. 1975 build. You know, we're probably going in doing foundation repair, new HVAC, which is the air conditioner system. New water heater, new flooring, everything cosmetic. Um, and, and again, just backing into the numbers here, about a $49,000 repair budget. Some of that will be expensed, and some of that will be capitalized. Capitalized meaning it's added to the basis in the property, the purchase price, plus that capitalized amount, which will depreciate over time. That means we'll take it as an expense, just a smaller expense over 27 and a half years. But those expenses related to that re re rehab and the acquisition can drive a very big loss in year one thanks to your acquisition and renovation of this property. And here's where the big tax advantage can come to you and my wife and I. We saw this in the first handful of years as we were both gainfully employed at the time. We would take these losses and we could offset. These are This is considered a passive loss because we are handling this as a passive investment for us. We do self-manage, it's true, but they're treated as passive investments. And we take that loss and we're able to offset our earned income. If you and your, you know, your significant other are both gainfully employed, you have that earned income coming from a job, you can take some of that passive loss and offset your earned income. Great, great tax advantage right there. Now, there are limitations. You can only take, if you're both gainfully employed, you can only take in most situations here again, I would refer you to your CPA, but you can only take up to $25,000 in passive losses against active income or earned income. And that phases out. So if you're south of $100,000 in adjusted gross income, you can take the whole thing. 
but between 100000 and 150000 in earned income from your job, which you see on that W-2, at the end of the year, it, it gets reduced, $0.50 cents per per thousand or so, whatever it is, uh, but that goes away above 150 k So depending on where you are, and again, we enjoyed this benefit as a husband and wife team as we were both working, buying houses, doing these, these rehabs, and taking those losses to, to reduce our tax burden. Second big tax advantage... And we talked about the ways we make money on our houses. One of those is the cash flow. Well, if you're doing it right, you will pay little to no money on your ongoing cash flow from operations thanks to that very depreciation that we mentioned. Again, depreciation is the ability to take the value of that property or, or our investment in that property and spread that, that value across 27 and a half years. It typically works out in, in my single family houses to date to be maybe three, four, five thousand six thousand dollars something like that and we take that as a paper loss and that offsets the cash flow to where we're not paying any any taxes on that and that and that, and that rings true for all of our our properties so big tax advantage taking that uh, uh passive income loss offsetting that against your earned income second big advantage little to no money paid in taxes on our ongoing cash flow those are the advantages. Now, we talked about the tax protest and the fact that the values are up. In year one, I'm going to give you a very big tip right now. Very low-hanging fruit for you. We just saw that the market value of this house is about 189 dollars k but we paid $121,000 for it because it needed work and quite a bit. So what am I going to do? I'm going to march down to that county appraisal district with my, my HUD-1, Hard, hard money lenders still tend to use the HUD-1 or my, my settlement statement, the, the, the document from the title company that shows my purchase price. I'm just going to show that to the county appraisal district. Here's what I paid. That is the market value. And 99.9% .9 of the time out of 100, they're just going to match that. Now, sometimes it helps to have pictures that show the, the distressed nature, condition of the property, why it was below market price. But normally the CAD, the, the county appraisal district, will immediately lower that value and you enjoy those tax savings. Now, I will tell you, sometimes it depends on who you buy the property from. Sometimes I may wait a year to file with that settlement statement, especially if my purchase time frame is later in the year, towards year end. And if I have bought from an older individual, why is that? Well, the county sometimes will leave the homestead exemption in place the over 65 exemption, a disabled veteran, whatever exemptions are in place, sometimes those stick with the property through the end of the year and my tax burden may be a couple hundred dollars. So I'm just going to leave that and then I'll protest that next year. And guess what? Next year I say, hey, by the way, I forgot to do this. Here's my settlement statement. Boom. They lower it. So that's year one. We've enjoyed quite a few tax advantages already. What happens in year two? Well, now we start to see the effects of appreciation, both in rents and values. And that's another way that we make money through real estate is through appreciation. It's not anything I calculate or bake into my math. It's just icing. It's just icing on the cake when it happens. And boy, we've been really enjoying it, as you know, over the past few years. That's why everybody is in an uproar right now, all the investors I know, because their values, well, quite frankly, they're up. Now, this property that we're looking at, it's around in the Houston area, so I went back to 2020. Houston saw about 15% uh, price growth measured against 2019. This was June to June. And rent growth in about the same time was, uh, well, 2021, I found. In, in 2020, it was a little bit flatter, so I just go with 5% rent growth. So here's what happens. We, we bought the house for 121. We did our repairs. We captured $17,000 in equity through the market value, through the process, it was worth 189 when I was done. Well, now, thanks to 15% appreciation, it's worth 219000 I've seen $30,000 in growth. That's just net worth. That's the bottom line. And if you think back, we had 50 k sitting in the property already anyhow. Now we're at 80. And that's a good problem to have, right? Maybe it's time to cash out. Maybe it's time to do a refi. Maybe it's time to sell already. You've already moved across that calendar year, you're now in capital gain status if you do decide to sell already, but we're going to hold it. We're going we're gonna to hold it for a little bit longer. Now, that, that growth in value, that could drive your property tax valuations. Again, that is a good problem to have, and it is one that you can fight after all. Now, let's go to the rent. 
Rent is up about 5% in this case. I'm just looking back historically. So we've gone from 1500 to 1575. We've 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 got a $75 per month gain. I know that sounds small, but your big cost, your mortgage is a fixed rate 30-year mortgage. That doesn't change. When you take your rents up like that, that's why rental real estate makes such a good inflation hedge if you have fixed rate debt on there as we as you should. Well, now we've just got 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 that cash coming in at a at a bigger bigger level to our to our pockets. And of course, taxes. You're thinking. I know you're sitting there thinking. Well, yeah, but property taxes are up. That's gonna that's gonna eat into that. But again, you're gonna fight that. And here's the thing: you protested it down to your purchase price last year. Most counties, some counties, will leave that tax valuation set for two, or I've even seen it for three years. So you may not have to protest again already. And if they do take it up, first thing you do is you march back down there with your settlement statement and point to that purchase price. I've had this happen year and year, again and again. I just go down there and say, hey, look, this is what I paid. They say, okay, you're right. I'm sorry. We shouldn't have taken it up already. (laughs) So take that advantage, take that approach, and see if you can't gain some some benefit out of that. Now, we're going to wrap up year two, get into our final year three of our hold period, and talk about what happens next when we sell. So stick around. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Andy Webb. If you have any questions, you can email me at askandy at l-u-i-n-c dot com. In fact, I did get a question I want to address. Somebody asked me what the website was where you can go and and, and become a member, join the Financial Freedom Program uh, for a discount at that. Let me give you that. It's givemetotalfreedom.com. That's the website all written together, givemetotalfreedom.com. That'll tell you about the Financial Freedom Program, all the benefits. You can go to our two-day class where we talk about buying and managing single-family houses on day one and, and get into apartments on day two. And if you use the promo code, all caps, Save Big, written together, S-A-V-E-B-I-G, Save Big, all caps. That'll give you a two-year membership heavily, heavily discounted so you can get in and start to have these conversations and and learn how to buy that house and learn how to renovate that house and learn about some of the ways that we do employ these, these, these tax tactics that we're talking about today. And we talked through year one. We're, we're just walking through an example of a house. If you missed any of the earlier show, go to lifestylesunlimited.com. Click on the radio tab for the archives. But we bought a house outside of Houston. This is an email I got from a realtor, an actual property that was for sale. So I've do- I dove into the numbers a little bit. And we're using that as our framework to look at the, the tax benefits uh, of being a real estate investor. A lot of those come in the first year when you buy that house. And a lot come in the last year when you dispose of that house. Kind of the bookends are where we really see the bulk of the action. But in the middle there, there's still quite a bit going on. And when we talked about year two, we talked about the fact that we saw appreciation. That's not a taxable gain. And as part of that gain, yes, our property taxes may be up, but we can go and fight those. We talked a little bit about using the HUD-1 or the settlement statement, the closing statement, to continue to fight those even in year two. And I'll tell you that we're still using that depreciation that we already saw in year one. We continue to use that in year two every year that we hold the property, three, four, and so on, to pay little to no taxes on our cash flow from operations. So we're really keeping that money in our pocket. That's a huge advantage. That's what I live off now that I am retired from corporate America is that cash flow, which is also why I will sure sure to be down at the county appraisal district protesting and fighting to retain that cash flow that I, that I, that I want. And one other advantage you'll see even in uh, year two, we talked about the appreciation you're now sitting on in this example, about $80,000 in equity. That is a lot of what we call debt equity. Now's the time to think about maybe pulling some of that out. If you're not ready to sell the property, we're going to get to the sale, but maybe you want to hold it for a few more years. Well, go ahead and pull some of that equity out by way of a cash out refi, but rates are up. So what? 
you can put that money to use and get into more properties that have more advantages, and, and it just goes from there. It just really it, it, it magnifies as you add more and more properties to your bottom line. Those advantages we saw in year one, well, we can have those again in year two if we buy another house, and year three if we buy another house, and in year four. And that's exactly what my wife and I have done for over 10 years now uh, to, 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 to great success. So go ahead and do that cash out refinance. That is tax free. You do not pay taxes on that money when you pull that out. It's simply a financial transaction. You're repositioning the debt is all that you're doing. So look, we don't have that big loss that we talked about in year one, but we are continuing to enjoy the benefits unless Unless, like I said, you bought another one and another one after that. It's easy to do. Now we're in year three. We're good. Let's, say, let's say we hold for one more year. Pr price growth in Houston was about 15.4% in 2021. So let's run with that number. That value, that house that we bought for 121 k put 49 into it, valued at about 190 when we were done. Well, the value is now at 252 through three years of, of price appreciation, we've added in, in this third year another 34000 to our net worth. If we didn't do that cash out refi and we haven't sold yet, well, we're now somewhere north of $100,000 just in equity. Hmm, should I sell? Maybe you should. Now you're out of that two-year, let's say, honeymoon with the appraisal district. Now's where, the, now's where you really get sticker shock. You're used to seeing that that value on the tax rolls at 121k your purchase price, and all of a sudden they take you up to 200,000. That's a 65 percent increase. Those are the moans that I'm hearing from my fellow investors right now. Again, you can do something about that. Go listen to uh, the recent show with Julian Ball. We talk about the process. We also talk about the fact that sales comps may not help in this market because all the sales are up. That's why we saw 15.4% growth in 2021 in Houston. But here's the thing. You are a good operator, and you do regular walkthroughs at your property. I would suggest do these towards the end of the year, towards the beginning of the year, and, and certainly before offering a lease renewal. Get lots of good pictures of anything that maybe, maybe that foundation has moved a little bit. You have a couple of sheetrock cracks. Maybe there's some other things that you can capture to build a story around the condition if you can't protest on sales comps, you can protest on this basis. And I've had a lot of success over the years in, in, in working up that story around my, my condition and the fact that this is a rental because everybody has that, that image in their mind of the, the slum lord. Now, that's not us. That is absolutely not how we operate. But you can work that into your story that the, the, the resident's not quite taking care of the property. Get those condition pictures, protest on that basis. Now, in the meantime, while you're working on getting those values back down on the, on, the, on the tax rolls, what have we also seen in Houston? Rent growth. 2021 was about 9.9%, .9%, so you're going to take the rent up. It was at 1575 We're going to go up to 1730 That's a 9.9% .9 increase. That's $150. Are the residents going to stomach that? Are they going to take it? Are they just going to stay in the house? You bet they will. You bet they will. They're going to look around and see that the values everywhere else are just as high, the rents. So they're going to look around, and they're going to stick around. Okay, here's another big tax advantage. We've, we've talked about some of the bookends on the front end. Maybe, maybe you're doing this full-time now. You've bought enough houses like we have to where you do go full-time as a real estate investor, and you elect to take the real estate professional designation. Talk with your CPA. Talk about how to declare that, how to how to track your hours spent. But I know a great investor. He does that full time. He's a full time single family and multi family investor, and he has taken the real estate professional designation. What does that do? It takes off that twenty five thousand dollar cap we talked about earlier. That passive loss limitation is it's capped at twenty five percent uh, twenty five thousand dollars per year in losses that you can take against your earned income. It, it that cap goes away. You can take all the losses you have. And in this case, in this particular example, his wife is, is an attorney. She earns very well. She likes what she does. She continues to work. And every loss that he makes, and we make losses on paper in real estate, he's able to offset her income and really pull down that tax burden by becoming a real estate professional. Again, talk with your CPA about how to, how to affect that designation. So now... We're in year three, and we've, we've seen that equity growth. We realize, holy cow, we are sitting on a lot of debt equity. We already did a cash out refi. We, we, we've held a little bit longer. Let's sell. Let's sell. 
Ah, but this is where the big tax hit's going to come, that capital gains and that depreciation we've been taking over the years. We have to recapture that and pay taxes on that now as well. A couple other small taxes work into there, but you do have options. You can do what's known as a 1031 exchange. This is part of the tax code that allows us to sell real estate investments reinvest those those funds those gains in the next set of real estate investments without paying any taxes we defer those it's called a 1031 exchange go to our website again lifestylesunlimited.com there's a search bar at the bottom type 1031 exchange we have a lot of shows that go into the detail but that allows us to defer the taxes now maybe in a couple of years we sell those assets. Have we have we avoided the taxes? No, we've simply deferred them to a, a, a point in the future. In fact, I was talking with Al Gordon, one of the other radio hosts, and he had done a 1031 exchange on one of his houses, rolled it into another single family property or two, and he went to sell one of those successive properties. He didn't want to do the 1031 exchange at that point. Did he have to pay taxes? Well, that was this year. We're gonna see how that shakes out. In theory, he would, but he took those proceeds and he invested those in multifamily in apartments. And guess what? All the things we just talked about, the depreciation, the, the passive losses, you can realize those in apartments as well, but to a much, much bigger scale. So is he going to take losses on paper on those apartments? Yes, he is. Is that going to offset that gain he saw in that house? It probably will to where he doesn't pay those taxes after all. So you have a lot of options. When you get to that last bookend, when it comes time to sell, you have the 1031 exchange. Again, you can roll that into more single family houses. You can roll that into your own small multifamily investment or just sell outright and shift those funds into a passive investment or two or three or four in apartments. Take the losses there through that depreciation, accelerated depreciation, and you've deferred even more taxes. Now, like Ben Franklin said, there's nothing certain in life except for death and taxes. Maybe you hold even longer with a view to your heirs and you pass that real estate empire on to your heirs. Guess what? Thanks to something called stepped up bases, they don't have those capital gains either. The whole clock resets. So let's say you're still holding that first house years from now. It's probably worth, what, half a million, maybe more? Impossible? No, just wait. It's going to get there. So your child, your, your grandchild, whoever, they're the heir, are they on the hook for a $400,000 gain? No, it resets back to zero. They can take that depreciation again and wash, rinse, and repeat. So hey, nothing in, certain is, nothing in life is certain but death and taxes. And I'll tell you one thing that is certain. Real estate can help you manage through the tax side of things anyhow. So if you want to learn more, go to lifestylesunlimited.com. Click on our free workshop. I thank you for listening. You've been listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Have a good day. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.